Have you ever had those moments when your drummer walks in or you come into a service and you see this? Hey everybody, welcome back to Alum House Sound. Today we're gonna to talk about the cajon. Have you ever had those moments when your drummer walks in or you come into a service and you see this come into the room? And you think, wait, that's my drummer. What is he carrying? And then the slow motion happens, the case opens, and out comes a wooden box. What is he gonna do with that thing? All right, so all joking aside, this cajon can be a great tool. I love it for acoustic environments. I love it for getting with just an acoustic guitar in a backyard or in a small room. They really have served a great purpose and they're designed, you know, from the Latin percussion environment. But the cajon has become kind of a standard uh, over the last 10 and 15 years. And so how do we incorporate it? How do we use it even within our live streaming environment, within our, our big front of house sound? We've got to use this tool as best as we can to, to simulate on some level a drum set. Now, it's not going to be a drum set. So you got to get that out of your brain. You're not going to get all of the various sounds. You've got so many things happening in a full kit that you just can't replicate with a box. Let's be honest. But when you add in the shaker, the shaker adds a little bit of, of character. Uh, I usually will play with a... Um, somewhere in this bag of goodies, my stick bag, I have the thing I'm looking for. Please wait. Aha, nylon brush. The nylon brush is a great tool that can be used to add some hi-hat type sounds, hitting it like this in the, I know, you're the sound guys, why do you care about this? But anyway, I'm just gonna tell you, maybe you can make some recommendations, but if you hold it downwards like this, you can hit at the top left corner or the top corner of the cajon, and you can hear the sound that even this makes. So you can add some kind of hi-hat sounds with that, subdividing with your right hand while doing the boom and the chick or the kick and the snare sounds. It's just another tool, adds a different texture, and it creates less miking for you. Now, let's take a second and talk about how I mic this thing before we get into how I mix it. So this is the cajon, and this is my cajon and my shaker as a percussionist. I've had to learn to gig on these, and as a sound man, I've had to learn how to work with these when people show up with them or decide to play them. The cajon in itself is just a box, and it sounds like this. It's got a snare sound, because it's got snares inside, and if you hit it down in the middle, you get a more boom sound, the lower, like a kick drum sound. But notice that you still get the sizzle of the snares, when you hit the bottom. That's an interesting point that will help distinguish this cajon in your mix. I've got a little dial on mine that I can turn the snares usually off like this, and then it just sounds like a big box. Which is really not gonna cut through the mix. So when I turn the snares back on, and you get So you get the boom and the chick. Or you add in the shaker and you get. All right, so let's talk about how I mic this cajon. I've tried various different microphones in my tenure as a sound engineer and as a percussionist. And so you've got your standard pencil condenser mic. I do not mic the cajon with this. Next we have a large diaphragm condenser. I have mic'd cajon with this. Here's what I'll say. When you put this on stage at most churches, the microphone's gonna be way too sensitive and it's gonna pick up so much stage noise that it's gonna be hard to isolate 
uh, just the cajon in your mix with it. It's also going to be a lot more sensitive. It's got the gold plated um, baffle on the inside. And so it's just what I've found is it's way too much. You also might be uh, interested in taking a kick drum microphone like a Shure uh, 52 or an Audix mic uh, and, and sticking that in the back thinking that you're going to get a bunch of low end out of it. And you will. And it's going to be muddy and it's going to take more EQ than really what you want to have to do. So what I have found, the tried and true SM57 in a pinch. I've even done a 58 because if you look at it, a 58 is not much different than a 57, but they're dynamic night microphones. They're made to take a lot of force and impact going at it. And it's got a pretty standard EQ curve on it. You're going to get a little bump uh, up in the top end, which does add some clarity and help you get this into the mix, as well as not having a whole bunch of low end in it. You're still going to get low end with the 57, which is nice. And then you can do this trick to help supplement that. Now, how do I mic this? I take a standard kick drum mic stand and I put this 57 inside the hole. So we're not going to sit out here because all that's going to pick up is the woofiness. We want to get the attack of the actual drum. So just like a, a kick in mic, we want to get this inside the actual cajon, uh, just a, an inch, two inches, something like that. But if you have it outside the drum, you're going to pick up a lot of exterior noise and a lot of just woof of the low end. And we want to get the pop and snap of it. Now, sometimes if I want to get a little bit more attack, I will have a 57 in the back and I'll actually take a 57 and set it kind of out here. This is designed to get more of that pop off of the top drum for your uh, kind of like a, a snare drum attack would be. But you have to be cautious that you don't get it right in the way of your, of your drummer because they might hit it and that's just not a good thing. So anyway, in this recording, I've got a 57 in the back of the cajon and that's it. All right, so that's all the preliminary stuff out of the way. We've talked about what the cajon is. And we've talked about how to mic the cajon in various different settings. And if you're gonna use one mic, two mics or three mics. Um, in this example, I have a worship leader sitting on top of the cajon. He's singing and playing guitar and he has the kick, it's actually my cajon, and he's got a kick pedal that is for the cajon that's wired up. And so his right foot is just working this kick. And all he's trying to do is add some emphasis into the song as the song gets bigger. So dynamic contrast grows. He's trying to add some of that element just to keep the song growing, which is great. We're not subdividing. We're not doing hi-hat sounds. We're not even doing snare sounds but the snares are still on. That's an important feature and an important fact to keep in mind. This is just gonna be a kick sound, but the trick that I'm gonna show you is how to round it out, add some low end back in that's not with EQ. This is a very uh, somewhat involved trick, <laughs> but we'll see that in the routing. Let's go ahead and dive into this and we'll get going. Warning, warning, this is my tech geek warning. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into this setup. First, we've got to get some understanding of what we're going to do so that when we go to the board and talk about it, you might have some notes and be able to follow along much easier. So we're going to use an oscillator. We're going to call that OSC, and that's going to produce a sound wave, a sine wave. Uh, you could have it set up pink noise or white noise, and you can use that to tune your room. But for us, we're going to be using an oscillator. So this is going to give us a set frequency. And for me, typically, I'm looking about 45 hertz that I'm going to be using within my sine wave oscillator. Now, the oscillator can be routed to various outputs, but it's uh, typically going to be used in a bus. So in this case, we're going to pick a bus that we're going to route the oscillator to the bus. Now that bus is just gonna have an oscillator constantly making noise, a, a, a constant sine wave of one pitch and one pitch only. The first thing that we need to do is make sure that we have no EQ or compression turned on on that bus. We just want it to be a straight signal and we're gonna adjust our levels as needed. Now that bus, what we need to do is control this and so we're going to use a, we're going to pick an extra channel. 
probably near our cajon. And we're going to set that to have a source from our bus. And this will make a whole lot more sense, but effectively the signal is going to come into the bus and then the channel will pick it up from the bus, which gives us a fader and all of our, uh, all of our features, the channel strip features. And the most important one is going to be the gate. Okay, so we're gonna turn a gate on, on this channel. And for me, just for reference, I'm gonna be using uh, channel two is what I'll put there. I'm gonna be using channel two. So the other thing that we need is we're going to have our cajon. So for me, my cajon is gonna be on channel number one. And I'm just using my standard kick channel instead of my, uh, it, you know, and having a mic go in there instead of my kick drum, it's gonna be an SM57 on the cajon. Now the gate is going to be sourced or triggered from channel one. And so what happens is anytime the cajon is hit, the cajon uh, will hit the gate for channel two will open up and that will let our bus sound, which is an oscillator, come through into our mix. So we need these couple different variable pieces to be able to make this work, but this is, uh, you'll see it's a really nice feature to add in to your mix and add in to the low end to help round out the sound. So let's go see how this uh, is set up on the board and then we will wrap up with an actual audio sample hearing from my service when I mixed and used this trick, the difference that it made. All right, so we're here at the console now and what I've done first, and I always recommend this, make a new scene. So I usually use my hybrid scene, which is up here. That is my normal live stream setup. And I've just taken that and I've copied it uh, just by going down to the next row and I hit save and I renamed it. In this case, I called it acoustic dash cajon. And that way I know that these settings are gonna be here anytime uh, I come back to the scene and I can alter and adjust things as needed. Now, after we've done that, we've got to start out with our steps here. So the first thing we're gonna do is pick a, uh, a bus. So I come down here to my second row. These first six are normally used for monitors on stage and our musicians mix these by themselves. So we have a lead vocal, a background vocal, we have a drum monitor, a bass monitor, uh, electric guitar, and then keys. Now, we don't have electric guitar on this Sunday, so I've chosen to use this bus to be able to facilitate this, this sub um, oscillator cajon trick, whatever you wanna call it. So I'm going to select that, I'm gonna to go to setup, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just change the color so that I know it's different. And in this case, I'm gonna make it really uh, bright and vibrant. We're gonna, it's nice and white, and that way you can see that jump out at you. It also helps it jump out at me when I'm mixing on the service. Now, the next thing we're gonna do, we talked about the oscillator. Well, what is that? We're gonna zoom into the screen and we're gonna take a look up there at what's going on. All right, so now that we've changed our color on our bus, what we're gonna do is jump up here to the screen. And on the right-hand side of the screen, you've got this monitor section and there's a view button. We're gonna hit the view button on the monitor section and that'll bring up some, uh, some settings here on the screen. Let's page over to the oscillator tab. And we're gonna work from the right to the left using these encoders underneath the screen. The first thing we're gonna do is select our bus. For me, I'm using bus five. So I'll mouse over there and then push it. Then coming over here to the left, we're gonna choose our type. You can see pink noise, white noise. We're gonna go up to the top and select sine wave and then push to set to sine wave. Now you do have two different options that you could use in these. We're just using F1. We only need one oscillator. And here you can see the frequency. And our frequency currently by default is 106. I'm gonna cut that down. I want this to be in kind of that low sub, sub low frequency. And so that's at 50 Hertz now. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is my level over here. I can push generate and you see it just starts to generate a signal immediately. And I'm gonna push this up to negative 30, I find seems to be pretty, pretty helpful. So once we have that done, um, we are good to go here with our oscillator. You can see that we're generating a signal. And if for some reason you have this, uh, this bus set to come into your house, 
you're going to hear this coming into your house a lot. All right, so the next thing we're going to do now that we've set our sine wave, you can see it is coming through on our bus here, bus five. The next thing we're going to do is pick a channel. And for me, my cajon is coming through my kick channel, which is channel one. And I'm just going to take the second channel, which is my, normally my snare drum channel. And the first thing I'm going to do, and this is a very important thing, look at this. If I'm trying to create a 55 hertz tone, I have a lot of low end cutout. So I need to turn off most of my channel strip features. If you see that EQ up there, that's going to stop everything that I am actually trying to create. So I'll turn off my EQ, I'm going to turn off my compressor, and I'm going to turn off my low cut. Now, because I've got this channel, I'm going to go ahead and also change the wording of that and make it white. So I'll go back to my setup area up here, and I can come down and make it white. And I've just chosen to call it sub and have uh, have a picture there. So at this point now we have a kick drum, we've got a sub channel, but that sub channel has not got any, does not have anything coming into it. We need to zoom back up to the screen and do some settings up on the screen next. Okay, so I've gone ahead and started some music just so we can see some of these things happening. Uh, I've muted everything except for the cajon, so you'll see the cajon kind of popping up here on these meters on the right. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in here on channel two. So again, this is my sub channel. So the first thing that I need to do is get a source. So if I come over to the config tab, you can see here on the left that I have source. And right now it's looking for input coming from channel two. We're gonna scroll down here using this first encoder and we're gonna get past all the channels, all the auxes, all the effects. Now we're gonna get to channel buses and here I can select bus five. Now what we're gonna see is that we have a constant signal coming in here right now. And that signal is gonna be passed through into our mix. So if we listened right now, we would hear that coming into our mix. So the next thing that we wanna do is go over to the gate channel. And the gate channel is very important. So when we're on the gate channel, what we see is we've got a threshold and we've got level coming in, the input level. And right now it's just set on its self. You can see the key source over here is self. And we wanna change that to be channel one so that when our cajon gets hit, then what we have is it's triggering this thing to come through, this oscillator to come through. So we use the, the page down button because you can see we have two pages. We're gonna page down and we're gonna change the key source here on the far right. We're gonna go down and select channel one. And so now we see that this little ball starts to bounce and that's every time the cajon gets kicked, we can see that that's bouncing. And we wanna have it uh, activated. So on the left, we will push active. And now you can see that only when the cajon is kicked, do we get a signal come through. When I turn this off, if you watch this meter, the meter is just sitting up all the time. And that's because the oscillator is going. But when I activate it, now it's working in conjunction with the cajon. Now, some of these settings are very important. So the mode here, we want to make sure we've got an expressive, uh, Expander four, expander three, expander two. We wanna keep it on gate. Gate is very important because all we're trying to do is just tap the subs uh, every time that the cajon is kicked. So let's go up a page and now we're back at our normal settings for the gate. And now we can fine tune this. So my attack is at zero. If I had a more lenient attack, it would, it would wait for more signal, but I want my attack at zero so that right when that cajon is kicked, uh, and the ball goes past this, this drop off line, then that sub sound is gonna pop through. Now we have hold, and hold is how long will the gate stay open before it starts to slowly close. And so the, the hold, I want the hold actually to be all the way down at zero or as close as you can get. And I'm gonna use the release time to help uh, to help give a breadth into this low frequency. If I had the release all the way down at zero, you would end up getting a popping noise. Uh, and maybe we can listen to this in a second. But for me, I find that having it somewhere in the 100 millisecond range tends to work pretty well for this. And the last thing over here is our range. You can see that if I have this set up like that, uh, with a very low range, this is actually gonna let some of this frequency come through even when the cajon is not hit. 
So we want to have this complete wall. So I just take the range and I turn the range all the way up here. Uh, I'm at about 50 decibels right now, and that is fine. Uh, you could turn it all the way up to 60 if you wanted to, and that's fine too. But this is what we want here. Anytime the, the cajon is kicked, we want the ball to go and the red lines to open up, and that lets our sub sound come through. So let's take a listen on some headphones and hear this actually happening uh, in, a, in a live stream musical environment. All right, so we are here looking at the screen of my computer, which is on uh, X32 Edit. And uh, obviously, it's a slightly different layout and interface than the console itself, but the concepts are transferable and everything that you're going to see here, you can do on your own as well if you download X32 Edit to whatever machine you're on and you could connect to it. So just as a quick overview, what I've got here on the left is my kick channel, then my sub channel, which we've just built. And then I trimmed it down so that you can see my band here. So I've got my two channels for acoustic guitar, my uh, pad channels, my keys channels, and then my three vocalists. I also here have the sub OSC. That is my bus. If you look down here at the bottom, you'll see bus there. And that's the bus five that we have. And you'll see that that just has a constant signal running on it. You can also see where channel two has a constant signal running on it as well. Now we'll see in a second that we're not going to hear it because if we look up here at the top, we'll see that this little indicator is for our gate. And so you'll see when it's just kind of popping on with the uh, cajon, because we've set that up. And then at the end here on the far right, you can see solo. And this is my matrix, which has the actual final output of my, uh, of my live stream. And I've just piped this microphone through the console into that as well. And if you really want to know, I'm recording into OBS. Many of you stream with OBS. So this is, uh, if you think about this, I have multi-tracks running on my computer, going back into my console. Then I have this microphone being added in at the console level. All of that is coming back to the same computer across USB, and then it's being recorded into OBS with screen capture. So uh, anyway, that's a quick little setup of what I'm using here. Let's dive into the settings. Now, I want to first listen to the Cajon just by itself. So what I'm going to do is just unmute uh, the Cajon channel here. And hopefully when I click on buttons on my console, you'll see them pop up as well. All right, so this is the Cajon and I'm going to mute my sub. In fact, I'm going to bring that fader all the way down. All right, now the first thing we're gonna do, I'm actually gonna mute all of my effects as well. All right, so if you, if you listen now, we talked about mic placement, right? And, and where is this microphone placed in the cajon? If you listen in the background, you're gonna hear the kick happening, but you're also gonna hear the vocals coming in. They're just singing, whoa, whoa, whoa. But if you listen, you can hear that. So that, that does have some bleed into it. Now, what I wanna look at here is on the Cajon settings, a look at the channel strip here for the kick drum. We're gonna start with the gate. And so this is my Cajon and I've got a gate on here. Uh, it's set as an expander uh, four to one. And you'll see that it's, it's kind of peeking through here. It opens up, but it's trying to keep some of that background noise out. If I turn the gate off, let's hear how much background noise we have. So that's a lot of background noise coming in just through that one microphone. When I turn on this expander, it does in fact turn it down. I don't want to completely mute it. Uh, I just think it seems a little unnatural with the way that this drum works. And so you can see the rest of the settings here. Standard hold and release is set up on this one. Uh, let's take a look though at the, uh, the EQ now. And you'll see that I do have low cut turned on. Now, right now it's at 55 hertz and all we're gonna hear is this drum itself. And I wanna turn the EQ and everything off. Let's hear what it sounds like, uh, just raw. So this is what an SM57 shoved in the back of a cajon sounds like. There's no gate, no EQ, no compression, no anything. So you got a lot of kind of hollow box sound and muddiness at the bottom end. You've got a lot of bleed over from your stage. So we'll turn the gate back on. 
So that cuts out some of our background noise. It still sounds a little lacking. All right, let's turn on the EQ. And so you can see we dumped a bunch of the hollowness out here in the mid range at that 400 hertz. We've also accentuated kind of artificially the top end to get some of those snares to pop in to our sound because that's gonna help it place in the mix well. Now, let's turn on our low cut. And again, this is normally a, a kick drum channel, so I'm gonna turn this up because we don't need the low end coming through from this. We're gonna use our trick for this. So 80 hertz seems to be pretty good. It's got just enough punch to it uh, that it, it helps to hit the upper mids, and then we'll fill in the sub lows with our other channel. So what does it sound like in the context of the mix now? Let's bring our instruments in. Vocals. And effects. So it's nothing earth shattering. It's just adding a little bit of boom at the bottom end to help fill that out. But it still seems that overall mix seems a little lacking on the low end. But first I wanna look at effects. Now, this kick drum does have some effects on it. Uh, it is going some places. So let's look and see where the kick drum is going. So I've got a little bit of my drum reverb, which is adding the top end. You can see here, this is bus 14. And then I have the all verb, which is a room verb, my vintage verb that I love. And that is, uh, that's adding in just a little bit of also the top end. So if we listen to it dry, all right, I'm gonna mute those. This is the cajon dry. Now I'm gonna add in the drum verb and listen to the top end shimmer that comes in. Off. On. Now here's the room verb. It gets a little wider. Off. Here we go on. All right, so no effects. And then effects on. So that's just helping to, to broaden out that sound, that cajon sound, and make it a little bit uh, more like it's in a room for our live stream. Now, the next thing we're gonna do though is we're gonna start to look at our sub channel. All right, so the biggest thing we wanna remember is first I'm gonna go to my actual sub channel here, and I'm gonna go back to my channel strip for this, and I wanna make sure that I don't have any EQ on any compression on, I wanna make sure no effects are on, no nothing, nothing, nothing. We just want a straight, low oscillation. The next thing we're gonna do is take a look at this subchannel that we've created. We know we're gonna have our gate turned on like we did, but again, no compression, no EQ, no effects, okay? We do want it to go to our left and right or wherever you're gonna route it, uh, but the other thing, um, this, this effect is an insert, but let's look at this. We do have this oscillator going to these other effects, the reverb and the drum verb, and that's gonna be a no-no, because let's listen to what this sounds like here. So that's a, that's a lot. But to hear it in the reverb, this is with my reverbs muted. And that's what we want. We, we don't want this overly reverby sound. So all I'm gonna do is come in and I can mute this from my, my verbs. And then I'll, I'll turn it back down. So we wanna make sure that we have everything on this channel turned off. And again, the goal of this is just to kind of bump those subs, bump the low end and help to add a little bit of texture and richness in the low end and warm your room up or warm up your live stream mix to help fill out that sound. So let's put this in context now. We're gonna start out with just the straight mix uh, with no subs, and then we will uh, we'll unmute this channel and we'll bring it up and, and fill out the sound and see what it does for us. 
The one last thing I'm going to bring up is the EQ that's on my live stream mix. And we'll be able to see that when we bring this thing up, you'll see, see how it gets pegged down here. All right. So I'm going to turn that down, but we'll be able to see kind of our EQ fill out and that'll be a nice little visual for us. All right, let's listen to some music. Hold on, be strong. Remember where So let's add some sub in. Sub off. Sub on. All right, so that's a a big difference maker. It's not going to sound huge right now, but you want to make sure, like pads, you want to notice it when they're gone. So that's a really cool tool to use, and it's got a lot of impact to fill out your sound for your cajon, for your acoustic set, and for your live stream mix. All right, guys, so that wraps up this video. This is the cajon trick the sub low end trick, whatever you want to call it. This is utilizing some really uh, far reaching ends of this console uh, to help round out the sound and give you another tool in your tool bag you can use while you're mixing. So whether it's helping you in your room or you're gonna stick it into your live stream, uh, if it's an acoustic service or event, or if it's even maybe somebody that comes in with a kick drum that sounds like trash, you've got the ability to take just the smack of the, of the kick drum, cut out all the low end, add this sub low in there, and kind of keep on rolling and make the event great. So take a second if you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and you will get notified of future content that comes out around sound engineering. If you've got any questions, put them in the comment section below. I'm always answering questions, and let me know what you'd like to see in a future video. Well, thanks so much. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.